Howdy folks, Craig Lavati here with the More You Know podcast from your great friends, your best friends at the yes. Skirfield Group. I am Craig Lavati, as I just said. Sitting to my right is, what's your name again? I don't know, I keep getting called Shelby, but I think it's Kelsey. Oh, sure. oh well, I don't, I always call you Kelsey because I know your name. No idea what you're talking about, mm, Kelsey. Yes. <laughs> hmm. That other voice over there is Nick Skirfield, the CEO, president, founder, owner, his name is on the building of the Scurfield Group. Nick, how you doing? Doing great. The imaginary building because we don't have a building. But are you we the are... El Prez? He is El Prez. Yes, he is. He's El Prez. Yes, he is El Prez. Uh, you I guys can call me whatever you want. Title. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess so. And that other voice you just heard is Chef David Cordua from the Lim Bar, Houston's new favorite restaurant, a local legend in my eyes, David. How you doing? Much. Thank how, you. How you doing? Great, man. Just fresh, excited to chat with y'all. Fresh off a plane from Paris. Yeah, dude. Jet lag is uh, still pretty strong. Did you, did you bring anything back for us? Any like little tiny like Eiffel Towers? Or? You know, yeah. you know. I wanted to bring strong. out big stinky cheese, but the uh, <laughs> the custom dogs were pretty hardcore. <laughs> well, like, really? Yeah, no, no joke. <laughs> they're like, "What's in this?" Yeah, but you're a really, really cute little beagle, but uh, he was finding everything. You. But you lived in Paris for a while, so like yeah. you're, you're like over all yeah, of the tourism stuff. I want to give David a proper introduction here. Uh, oh, well, I'm sorry. I was well, you know, being friendly. We were on our way. No, it's good yes. friendly banter. It's good friendly banter. But <laughs> okay. one of our very first guests here on the podcast. Second guest. Second no guest. Way. Mm -hmm. are. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're following uh, Rachel Kwan from the Final Four. So, um, But we're very excited to have you on here. Uh, I've known David for better more than a decade probably now and um we That's had weird. the it is yep. makes me feel old uh and we had the the pleasure of working with you for the launch of the limbar and for those who don't know uh, david is a native houstonian um, i've got a usc shirt on for southern california but he went to santa clara uh they for college a lot they do right yeah yeah and uh david was a straight jesuit grad uh went to santa clara uh and we can talk about this more but I know you were not thinking about being a chef. Uh, and then you ended up at culinary school in Paris. And uh, from Le Cordon Bleu, David went to Northern California back in Houston. Uh, he was part of his family's legendary restaurant group with Churrasco's and America's Restaurants, uh, along with his dad, uh, the, the infamous chef Michael Cordua, uh, who was a self-taught chef. He's the legend. From Nicaragua. Legend. Well, we've got a living legend here with us. Uh, I would say David is uh, a rising star chef. Uh, any way you want to cut it. And uh, the Limbar is getting a ton of uh, recognition from media, uh, from the public. It's an awesome new space at the ION. Uh, Craig uh, spent a lot of time there uh, throughout the opening, as did, as did we in uh, Latin Mediterranean, very bar forward concept, uh, great design, great art there. And uh, Thanks, David, it's been uh, it's been really awesome to see you with your, your debut solo restaurant. And uh, so far, it seems like it's been going really great, man. How's, how's everything been going with the Limbar so far? Up and up. Up and up. Every, every week, more people are, are catching on to it. You know, it's, it's in a, you know, up and coming part of, part of town. So it's not, it's not an, in an obvious River Oaks district or uh, a, a West Gray um, Montrose location like, like we've had with our past restaurants. So it was a bit, it was a bit of a risk, but I think that makes it kind of fun. It's a discovery. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a good and it's a good uh, showcase, too, for the ION. And you're, you know, you're inside the ION, which is this amazing, you know, tech forward place. Joey Sanchez is doing an amazing job over there. Friends of all of ours. Uh, it's just it's a really it's this great. If you don't know about the ION, it's this tech incubator in Midtown. And then David opened up like the most amazing restaurant inside this tech incubator. And it's just it's gnarly. It's so cool. And I've, I've had everything on the menu at least three times. So <laughs> nice. thank you. It's been great. Yeah. I even I, took I, a date I, there. I, I won't worry about you next time you come. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I might ask you to walk around <laughs> tables and make some recommendations. I think I actually could now. Yeah. I think I could like recommend things, probably, you know, go behind the bar, shake up a few mocktails, figure stuff out. But no, it, it was just so great watching the rise of everything and it's just getting bigger and bigger. So Thanks. congratulations yeah, no, the, again. I, the, the Ion's been a really fun place to work out of. It, it has uh, almost a college campus vibe the way it's so uh collaborative and then you know some days we walk in there'll be like a robot in the yeah. middle of the hall or there's a 3d printing lab um you know people developing apps everywhere and uh nasa's you know, there nasa's there yeah. you, you you get uh this combination of kind of 
you know, Bitcoin tech bros uh, with, you know, really international business people as well. Uh, there's a few like embassies that are putting offices. It's just really cool mix of different different people, but it feels really vibrant. Uh, it's like I feel like I went back to college. And you see people, you know, that are obviously probably doing like amazing things upstairs and on that floor. And then they, they get back sort of to like a homey roots when they go to your place. You yeah. Know, you can so tell we, it's like it's a good restaurant to center yourself in. We, we wanted to be a, a contrast to all of that, you know, digital tech, you know, tech world yeah. outside of our, our full walls and create something that was kind of more more analog and just uh, like your watch and, and once upon a time yeah 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 analog is a good I, why did we not use that more when we were doing everything you stole that that's think, a great I line think, did we i think we did okay i think I we mean, called it I, analog I, de I definitely had that in mind yeah with uh with the design um like having nothing digital looking mm -hmm. uh in the space and everything being from when things were analog and had mechanical parts. Kelsey's been there a few times with us and I know you really like those the red couches we were sitting on. Oh yeah, they're, oh, they're so comfortable. The little the showcase like you feel couches like you feel there. Like you're sitting at home cuz like Stairs. you're sitting at this really comfortable couch eating this like delicious like heartwarming food for like <laughs> to, to be totally honest every time I leave there like I'm just happy. Um, I don't know if Craig and, and Nick are familiar but how did you actually end up at the Ion? I don't think I've ever heard yeah. that story. Cuz remember I drove up and I was like I got to admit this is not a place I would have put a restaurant but it works Perfectly. Definitely. Thank you. So uh, in the middle of pandemic, I think it was probably summer of, of, of 2020. Uh, we were we were looking for a catering space and uh, the Ion reached out initially for a breakfast concept. That's when I how I first you know got connected with them. And the uh, the broker from Blue Ox uh, Burdett Huffman, shout out. Um, I was like, hold on a minute. I went to a party hosted by Chase Bank at your house. And it was one of the funnest house parties I've ever been to. And he was like, how do you feel about opening up a bar? <laughs> it was like, absolutely. Uh, I really thought that in the middle of a, of a pandemic, you know, we needed to be a commodity. Um, and the, the restaurant market in Houston, uh, was really saturated uh, and places were only I felt as good as they were new um, you'd see restaurants pop up and last you know two three years uh, like if they were bars and the things that were really trending during the pandemic were commodities like coffee shops uh, burger places pizza Tex-Mex and, and bars and I, I really I say commodity because I, I, I needed it to be something that you're going to use at least once a week. Yeah. You know, yeah. and we wanted it to be a neighborhood place that it was accessible. Um, you know, fine, fine dining has been on a decline for, for a while. Uh, so, so bar really like hit a, a lot of, a lot of the check boxes for me, but uh, people are coming for the food more yeah. than anything else. Yeah, I mean the drinks. I mean, I I've had all the every, all the drinks that have come out look amazing, obviously. And I mean, me and Nick are fans of the of the mocktails. Appreciate the mocktails. It's yeah, old fashioned. Yeah, old, there's a, uh, I mean, there's about four or five of them that I kind of have on rotation there. We've never we've never sold this much, uh, liquor, beer, and wine at any of our previous really? concepts. Uh, yeah. So in that sense, you know, mission accomplished. But um, you know, we could be could always be more. <laughs> when when you came up with the menu, I know it was definitely a lot of very family oriented. It's a great it's it's definitely it is. And we brought up the term solo. It is sort of like your solo album in a sense. It's all your influences all, you know, rolled into one. And just the menu is just legendary. Th thanks. I can't I can't really say it's 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 a solo effort because it's what it is. It's a it's a cumulative effort of, you know, uh, my my family's uh, recipes for you know several decades. My culinary school experience, my my travels, my wife's uh, background and heritage. She's Mexican Lebanese. That's why there there is that influence on the menu. 
Um, but on Limbar Street itself, uh, it was our family that you know, Churrascos and Americas came out of. But there was also a Lebanese family called Drubies that had a chain of Lebanese bakeries uh, and, and delis around town that, that are still they're still around. Um, so it was, it's really our experience on on that street in that in that moment in time. And you know, if Churrascos and Americas were about our Central American, South American heritage. This is about our roots in the city, yeah. uh, and that's been that's been really fun to do because there's like kind of no rules. We can yeah. draw from you know, a lot of different cultures from the city, and it's a great it's a great story too. Just about Houston, you know, when people come to Houston and they make something of themselves, and then the next generation picks up that that mantle, right? So I kind of get that vibe too. Every time I'm there, it's like you're picking up that, and you have all these different influences that you've gone on your own as an adult going through your adult life and it's just, it's all out there. So. What's been really fun is, is that people are going with it, you know? Yeah. And like, I don't know if that, if that would have, that would happen in another city yeah. or, or in a, you know, other, other time period. But now people are like, they're, they're, they're open to a story and a, and a personal perspective. They're like, okay, what, what are you about? Cause I can, I can get, you know, a, uh, a $15 burger at, uh, any hotel, but what, what's your, what's your story? Yeah. More people are interested in that. They want to know the storylines. They want to know the origin stories. We talked a lot about that origin stories, comic books. You're a big comic book guy. Yeah. So the origin stories are all, that's Which what there are comic about. books. There, in there the are comic books from, inside the restaurant. Yeah. My, my comic books from, from Limbar. Yeah. From that, I don't, I don't know how I managed to keep those. <laughs> <laughs> what I like, what I, one of the things I really like about it. And I remember talking to you about this, concept years ago or just the idea of it that you know this is how you like to eat right i mean it's like you can a lot of shareable plates and the bar forward element of it and i think that's reflective of how you know a lot of people like to eat now it's like when i go to a restaurant i want to share you know i don't want to i kind of feel a little weird if someone orders their own thing and doesn't want to share it with me you know it's like and i think the limbar it's very it's got a very sort of communal um feeling to it where you could go there for a full sit down meal. You could go there for a snack just to have a cocktail. You know, can, can you talk about that a little bit about how, how you kind of came up with that? Idea? Yeah. So, so, so a couple, couple things about that. First, first is I think we just all have a little bit of food ADD now, like, you know, people like having a lot more different flavors in a meal than, than 30 bites of one thing. People yeah. our age group are the same way. I mean, we're all right. close to the same age. And so, yeah, we, we don't, let's not call them A all the time. It's A through Z. Yeah, it's like having yeah. streaming services. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And we so. demand that from our food too. And like, that's how we love to eat. Yeah. It's just the, it's just the yeah. way we take, we, this is the way we consume. But from, from, a, from a chef standpoint, from a culinary standpoint, there's also a benefit to it. Um, there's a reason why when you, uh, you know, ask someone about a new restaurant and how it was, so often they'll tell you the best part was the appetizers and it's not that's not a coincidence the the reason why appetizers tend tend to be more interesting more flavorful more impactful is because you can put a lot more intensity into something that's only you know eight eight to ten bites to to finish when when something is you know 30 bites to finish it can't be that strong. Otherwise it's, it's, it's too much. Mm -hmm. You'll have 30 bites of, of a steak. Yeah. Maybe of a, of a pizza, you know, of, of a roast chicken or something. Um, but when, when you compact that, you can put a lot more flavor into it and it, it leaves more of a, it's more a really great people. opening act. Like at a concert, right? It's like a really, it's discovering a really great opener at a show. Yeah. 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 Something, I mean, th things that, um, you know, hold your attention for a shorter amount of time can be can be a lot more intense. Um, Speaking of your favorite thing over there. Oh, the Twinkies. Yeah. Truffle Twinkies. <laughs> I cannot get enough. Every time we go, like I, we, we have to split them with people that we're there with. And every time I'm annoyed by it because I'm like, I want all of them. <laughs> those those are mine. I want all the <laughs> They're Twinkies. so good. I cannot get enough. Like, can you can you describe that dish for us, David? That's yeah. A, we're all going to be depressed because we're going to be really hungry. For the audio. Yeah. It says the for guy the who's audio. actually heading to the Ion after this, so you can go get actually. some, actually. For the audio, <laughs> for you you, you listeners out there, uh, David, please describe them in the most. So it's uh, it's it's brioche. Not safe for work way. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
So the, the Twinkie itself. Is, you guys that are working out right now, like you're going to hate us. Go. It's the Twinkie itself is, is brioche that has been removed of all its crust. Like, like if your mother really loved you. Um, she does, I think. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <Mom>. <laughs> And the filling of the Twinkie is uh, an egg yolk custard, which is egg yolk that we cook sous vide um, at 70 degrees Celsius. So, so it it's running. It's, it just has this perfect gel consistency, yeah. uh, just like a perfect soft, you know, boiled egg or, or a perfect poached egg. Uh, and then we just shave an obscene amount of uh, black truffle into it uh, and finish it with truffle salt, shave more truffle on top of the Twinkie uh, and finish it with some sky. My God. Yeah. So and it's, it, you know, it's, it's one Twinkie is about two or three bites. And I think that's, what, you know, I know you can eat all three of them, but I, I could, but it's an example. It's an example of, of something that is, you know, it can be that intense because mm -hmm. it's, it's mm -hmm. small. Like you couldn't have a whole, you know, egg sandwich with that much, Truffle, it would just be, it, you might get a little dizzy. <laughs> it's, 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 it's truffle it's, high. Yeah. It's bracing. It's good. It's, it's um, like, I'm a fan of the uh, ceviche. Like, that's my jam. And, like, I don't want to share that with people. Like, that's so this, mine. So the ceviche is really cool because um, it's, a, it's a combination of South America and um, French Polynesia. And uh, in, in South America, it's really common to serve ceviche with one of two things, either sweet potato or what they call choclo, which is this giant hominy looking corn. Uh, but the sweet potato really kind of cuts the acidity uh, of, of the, the dish in a really cool, cool way. And then in French Polynesia, their uh, poisson cru, which is kind of their version of, cevi of ceviche, is finished with coconut milk. Uh, so we kind of took those two ideas, sweet potato on the bottom and uh, coconut milk, a little bit of fish sauce, and chili oil on top, and it it works in a really cool cool way, and it's our best seller, actually. Yeah. That that plate. Yeah, I, David is like an encyclopedia of knowledge about know. food, and I, we could. You were giving us a a little bit of like a Nicaraguan accent, you know, in Espanol prior to the podcast starting with with some stuff, but I, I could I feel like I could listen to you talk about food all day man i hope that's not weird to say i but. can talk about it all day yeah well, yeah well, Nick, what's <laughs> part, part of the reason why i like getting into food you know music which you know craig and i have talked was my my first love because it's universal and connects you with everyone but i mean food food even more yeah food yeah. even more yeah and i've i've always known you to be a, a big supporter of other chefs and restaurants throughout throughout town um you know as long as i've known you and uh, the enthusiasm that you have, you know, whether it's Blood Brothers barbecue or, you know, I can think I remember you used to do the, the food tours with the city of Houston and you know, oh, stuff was so fun. Hola, Houston. And I mean, it's like um, I, and I, it's really cool for me as someone that's known you for a long time to see that enthusiasm, you know, coming back to you now from other people in the community with the restaurant. You know, and I think it's uh, I think it's very well deserved. And, you know, we're recording this. This will come out in March, but. I'm just saying, you know, uh, we might be looking back on this uh, after you've won a James Beard Award, you know, one of these days down the line uh, or gotten some some major recognition. And uh, I'll be pretty, you know, we're going to be pretty fortunate that we had you on this podcast, man. We're just trying to be your favorite, your favorite restaurant or na your neighborhood spot. Uh, that's that, that that's that's the only only intent and and make it craveable like you're just thinking about it when you wake up in the morning like oh, I, gotta, I need a twinkie today what there's a lot do? of parallels between you brought up your music but there's a lot of parallels i think lately in houston between music and food because I, I at least my friends i know we can all sit around and talk about our favorite restaurants the way we talk about our favorite bands and yeah. like and the our favorite our bands are the restaurants you know and you know their favorite in the your your the favorite songs are their favorite dishes well i can get i can get weird about the get weird about the Let's get weird. And, mu and music parallels. So, um, in 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 music, you know, <clears throat> you usually start learning music by playing a chord, right? And a chord is made up of three notes. It's a it's a bass note, a mid note, and a high note. Um, 
my the first thing my father ever taught me with food was the concept of the vinaigrette, which is one one part uh, acid to three parts fat. Uh, and that's a kind of a magic ratio uh, that makes your mouth happy. It just yeah. it just makes things work and makes you want to go back and 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 keep keep eating and keep eating. Um, you add an aromatic element to that, and you have a quart. So you have one part acid, three parts fat, and an aromatic, and it and it works just like a musical note. And when it's when you hear a chord, there's this beauty and harmony. It's just like, it's right. And it resonates through your body and it feels right. It's the same with a, with, move. a with a, with a bite of food. Yeah. yeah. When, when it's, when it's super, super imbalanced like that, it's just right. And when it's off a little bit, it's not, it's, it's dissonant. You're like, yeah, there's, there's just something off and you, you, you keep going to, to find that, that harmony. I see a lot of people doing the happy food dance when they eat at your place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like we, love, like we go to a fish, fish show, you kind of wiggle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it, I just like I said, like you, 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 you're able to put food into music in a, in a really fun way. Yeah, I'm thinking about those empanadas right now. Yeah. I love that Monte Cristo empanada in particular. Uh, the uh, the beef tenderloin tacos la rabas. Josh can uh, put on some like sexy saxophone music right now under this would be great. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe and and I'm a sucker for the desserts. Uh, yeah, I mean. The Tres Leches, uh, to me, is the standard for Tres Leches in Houston. It's the first one I actually ever had um, back when I was working with you way back in, in the America's days. But um, but the, man, the sweet corn flan is like, that thing is a game changer. And I, I'm i definitely going to eat one of those as soon as we finish this episode. So so that's a combination of, uh, of sort of three, three different ideas. Uh, you know, flan is... Uh, basically a French creme caramel. It's from it's eaten in Spain. It's eaten in all of Latin America. Um, but our version, and this was something that uh, my dad and his pastry team did decades ago, was they introduced cream cheese into it. Mm. So the texture was a little firmer, a little denser, uh, not as eggy and, and, and jiggly. Um, and then we brought in uh, street corn like elote in, into the mix, uh, which gives it this like, you know, home, like, oh, I know. Cra craveability. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm going to mark this <laughs> podcast not safe for work, guys. Going to have the little explicit thing on there, not for curse words, but for just food porn. And then just for, for a little texture, we finish it off with uh, like Cracker Jacks from a box. <sighs> it's they're literally, I, I mean, I, I wish I could put a little Cracker Jack, you know, yeah, gift gift with each with each plate. We're gonna and corn shoots. We're gonna have to come in. I like that playful stuff you do as well with the, with the food, you know. But we're gonna we're gonna have to come in. I think as a, a podcast uh, group and it's painful. Get but some we'll content. have to do it. Yeah, I, mean, I think we're gonna have to come in there and <sighs> see some of this stuff in action for too long. Yeah, I didn't know today, what we were please. talking about. I would I wouldn't oh. come empty handed. Oh, but I'll, we'll see you in a little bit. Sorry guys, but you know, we can. So where do you go eat in town when you're not at Limbar? I know you're at Limbar like all every day, but like, where do you go? What are your, what are your greatest hits in town? Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm really loyal to, to neighborhoods. I mean, I, I, I used to live in Mont Montrose and, uh, uh, cafe ginger is like a regular place of mine. It's just comfortable. There's jazz piano, Playing. I mean, it's at the end of a strip mall, but you walk in there and like, it's 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 the most comfortable, elevated experience. And Chinese food is the most comfortable thing. Yeah. Like. Mm -hmm. But I also I also love I love I love their sushi. Um, you know, and I live in the East End uh, now, uh, so obviously the the Tex Mex over there is uh, bonkers. It's so 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 good. Um, but there's also some, um, you know, some good Vietnamese yeah. in the area too. Where do you like Vietnamese? Um, God, I'm, I'm blanking on the name right now, but you asked me what the first thing I wanted coming back from my flight. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's that reset that then. You're getting ahead of yourself. Okay. I'm going to ask everybody what their favorite thing is they get when they, when you came home from Paris the other day, right. With your bride. 
and you guys were like jet lagged and you were like, what was the, what was the first thing you guys wanted to go eat when you came home? Uh, normally it's when I, when I come home from <clears throat> any trip, Tex-Mex is the first thing I crave. Cause it's, you know, it's, it tastes like Houston. It's like it oxygen. Like, you need it. it. Tastes like home. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like where was this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think after it was, a, you know, 26 hours of travel, um, there, there and back. And I was like, and I needed to hydrate bad. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> the first thing I, I, I needed was pho. Okay. Yeah. But just said, I told my wife when I was like, I need some pho. I, that sounds like so, so healing. So you were like probably on the flight here, just like completely just like white knuckle in it. I need some pho. <laughs> I, need some pho. I need some of that. Just need that need hot that, water. Need that healing. Where do you, where do you get pho? That's, um, pho Saigon is one of my favorite spots. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I usually get it on Uber Eats. Um, because I'm usually feeling very tired or jet lagged. Uh, and it's a good, it's a good dish to come home to. Yeah. In past years, like, you know, usually very hungover after a, uh, a trip out of town, uh, stop drinking, but you know, still it's like, it's, it's no matter what, even from just travel and being tired, it's like pho. I feel like it's just, it kind of, uh, restores me to life a little bit. Um, so I, I really like, um, I really like Fuss Saigon. There's a couple others, um, uh, and I'm blanking on the name right now, but uh, it's also, it's very affordable, you know? And so getting that at home, uh, I usually and finish it all. you feel good after. It's not like heavy, like. It's, it's uh, restorative. Feel good, yeah. have a great yeah. night's sleep, and the next day. It's the good. hydration, it's the restoration. Collagen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the beefy tendons. The eye the round veggies. or whatever, it, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what exactly I'm ordering with the with the beef, like the, the eye round, the flank steak. I think we need to have a it. we need to have a pho guest on. We need to find somebody to talk about pho. We should. Yeah, we should. bring pho in here if we can do that. Uh, uh, we'll just spill on the things, but yes. What about you, Craig? Where first first thing you want when you come back from out of town? I'll tell you this a fun story. Um, my first week with the Scurfield group, uh, I went to New York. Uh, to help with the Trailburgers appearance on Good Morning America, and nice. it was it was a whirlwind forty eight hour tour of New York City. Um, super fun, super exciting. Um, New York was hot and sweaty, so I felt home. Uh, got off the plane um, at Bush at like one a.m. and by one forty five a.m. I was in the Waterburger line at the Waterburger office, Shepherd. Ordering two burgers after I just spent 48 <laughs> hours doing nothing Pushing but helping burgers. push burgers. Uh, so, yeah, it was water burger. And I know that sounds super pedestrian for you guys out there. Like, nah, but no, it just that's it's a strong move. What's your, what's that's what I needed. Order? Huh? Um, double water burger because I'm a big boy. Um, meat, cheese, mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup, pickles, jalapenos, no lettuce, no tomato. Uh, and I get a. <laughs> Get a Juster Burger for the ride home. Just a little little baby Juster oh, Burger. I didn't even know what that is. Juster Burger is just like a tiny little, it's like, like a their junior, their yeah. Whopper Junior. Yeah, yeah, Junior Burger. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, you know, because you need a burger for the ride home. Um, completely just meat and cheese, uh, extra large onion rings, large Coke, and then. <laughs> Right, this I'm is not, what you get every this, time. This sounds like sounds like some sort of like a like we're having like a intervention or something, um, and then uh, cinnamon roll if they what have is, them. I don't is, want to make you feel bad, Craig, but it does sound like an intervention. This right sounds like I'm like listing off like you this know. Is, this is what you get every time. Drugs. You go to burger. It's Ron Burgundy. Not every actually. time, but like usually that was a you know that was a cele- that was a celebratory meal for you know many ways. But yeah, that's I'm not, I'm not that's normally. Mad. I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it, you know. I think it is. It's, and then usually, I'll probably tap out after the onion rings and the burgers, and then the cinnamon roll is usually breakfast the next day. Dude, yeah, you can. You need to write like a story just on your water burger menu. It just it's and yeah, it's um. And the last time I was you've there, thought that, you've thought that out. The last time I was out I there, um, it. I ordered the cinnamon roll, and the 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 woman that works in the drive thru I think she recognized me. And she was like, "Sugar, you don't need the cinnamon roll tonight. I just gave you a bottle of water instead." They were out of, they were out of, and I think she was trying to help me. I think she was just like, "No, you don't. You're good." I, she goes, "I took it off That's your." Amazing. She goes, "I took off the cinnamon roll. You're just getting a bottle of water tonight." And I was like, "Okay, 
All right. See, I, they they I, take care of you. I didn't I even love... know Whataburger had cinnamon rolls. <laughs> yeah, they do. I didn't know that either. <laughs> yeah, Learning do. a lot on this podcast. Yeah. I, uh, Whew, I love Whataburger late night. You actually are. I yeah, a little bit. Here. Like I'm a little. Yeah, I got a little. I didn't know if that was the, just overheated. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if it was hot in this room or you're just getting. Mm, describing Whataburger. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love Whataburger late night, but I only get breakfast when I go there. It's like I, I get can't the, eat Whataburger the during the day. Interesting. I don't find that natural. So I, see, I'm always honey butter chicken biscuit and I and the taquitos. Yeah. And I have I have a very specific order on the taquitos, which a friend of mine from USC who's from Houston told me to try this, and I do it every time. And I do the uh, I ask for a taquito with uh, potato egg and cheese, sausage, bacon, and then I ask them to add a chicken strip on Ooh. top. And it always confuses the shit out of them because they're like, <laughs> Do you want do you want a chicken strip order? I'm like, no, no, no. Just one chicken strip on the taquito. And yeah. sometimes I get it right away, but usually there's there's a lot of concentration. Y'all are pros. Sometimes I get they just give me a chicken strip on the side, but the, the way it should be is a chicken strip yeah. on top of all that. You wrap it all up. I put a bunch of that um, picante sauce on there. By the way, we do have a dispensary client, so maybe that, that is- just read between the lines. <laughs> I, this is whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. a no. dumb question. Do they put it like in the... Tortilla yeah. or okay. Huh? Sometimes I was picturing it like if they don't do it, it oh. if like, they don't do it, I do it and I put it in there and it's and all that fits on the, the tortilla. Kind of, it closes like eighty percent. Get weird and start adding chorizo to that. Huh. Never you, thought you about that. You can't eat that in the car. Though. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> that sounds like a mess. What? Yeah, yeah. But, I, fa- but fast food is always better in the car. Yeah, it's, Taco it's Bell never, it's only never in the car. When you get when you get home. Taco yeah. Bell, a bean and cheese burrito with no onions in the car is perfect. I've never <laughs> ordered that at Taco Bell. Yeah, I don't oh, think I. To. That's, that sounds to. like a shameful Taco Bell order. Oh no, you got to. Yeah, like three of them. That's uh. No. Yes. Why are you going to Taco Bell when there's like El Rey? <laughs> I mean, you get cravings. It's a thing. I've been to Taco Bell like fifteen. Running for the border, third meal, fourth meal. It's a meal, thing, whatever. also for a lot of the Indian community. The the bean burrito. Really. Yeah, a lot of uh, Indians have like deep, deep nostalgia of growing up eating Taco Bell because it's one of the few fast foods that's vegetarian. Friendly. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a good point. It's, yeah. I just went to Kieran's the other day, by the way. Oh, man, I miss her. So good. Uh, they, they, asked what did she, they asked about you. What did she just post? She was doing a whiskey dinner. She was just uh, named a James Beard Award yeah. finalist. And- Finally. Yeah, which is great. So 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 deserved. Amazing Indian food. She's my she's my other mother. Yeah, uh, we we kind of got sidetracked a little bit, but I mean, I'd like to hear what you guys order at Whataburger though too. I mean, yeah, like, let's just do before that we, yeah. before we finish with Kelsey's. Well, Kelsey needs to tell us for you. Tell us what you what you get when you come home. Yeah, and then we'll go back to Whataburger. I mean, all podcasts lead back to Whataburger eventually. It's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a legal, no, it's a legal thing. I think apparently in Texas, if you host a podcast, you have to mention Whataburger at least one episode. Okay. What do you get when you come fly home? When you come fly home? When I come fly home. When I come fly home. Or you drive back into town. Yes. I'm usually hungry because I don't eat on planes. Like I don't like it. So I should have said it. Like I usually drive through El Rey because there's one not far from my apartment. El Rey. So I go to El Rey. Mm -hmm. White rice. What do you order? Yeah. Um, usually just the fajita chicken because I just want something like comforting that I know is always going to be good. They, I don't know if they have it anymore. They used to have a tempura shrimp top, taco that was my Ooh. favorite. It was so good. And I went the other day. I want day. that now. Hmm? I want that now. I don't know if they have it anymore. I didn't see it on the menu and was I was like pretty happy. Next podcast, we're yeah. bringing food. We have to. We're bringing food. Is that okay? I don't know yeah. what the Can we bring with, food in here? Is that Eating okay? with a microphone. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. What's that? What's that? Like the crunching and eating on the microphone. Isn't that a thing? Like people do that? ASM, like, oh, ASMR. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we can make a lot of money at that if you know what I mean. So, <laughs> Like an yeah. OnlyFans page? Sort of, or? yeah. yeah. I, I, I actually might pay to watch Craig eat that entire thing. That whole like or, that that or, that uh, yeah. shameful. If he's wearing nice, a really yeah. tight t-shirt, I might watch it. Too. Call, we call it the like vulgar David, like display of Whataburger. Like, yeah. On yeah. The floor. Oh, God. I saw Kelsey's eyes just kind of <laughs> yeah. very wide. Uh, and uncomfortable. But <laughs> maybe Kelsey will be sitting in a different yeah, I chair. Yeah, I did feel a bit. I did feel a bit there, right. like I was describing, like by like night at the opium den, like you know, just chasing the dragon, <laughs> Waterburger style. Uh, All right. Wow. Well, yeah. So Waterburger. My, my, my order is basic, and it just it's a, a Waterburger with bacon. For me, Waterburger 
has to have bacon. Yeah. No, I it, get that. I get yeah. that. Yeah. There's something about the smokiness. It's like, because all that mustard combined with the bacon, it just t- it tastes like Texas. Do you tea. limit yourself to Whataburger though? Because I, I try to only get it like it's like a very, maybe like every two months. Or I, I don't once go, a month, maybe. I don't go very often. Yeah. I don't go very often. When when I do, it's late. Yeah. It, it, it's special. It's late and it's like. You it's, earned it. It's, it's a closer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, and you earned it. <laughs> yeah. You can't be productive after you eat. No, no, no. Like, no. That's, that, that's the thing. Yeah. 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 Like we can't have like a work meeting and be like, yeah, I'll bring water burger. And be like, no, I'm going to be comatose in the corner. Like, right. yeah. You can't Where's the couch? That. Yeah. I feel like I have to say this, but uh, I'm, I'm sure nobody's going to like this, but. I still think In-N-Out's better. And uh, probably an unpopular opinion on this podcast, but I um, I just... I mean... In-N-Out is lacking the I'll give you the hours. burgers. I won't give you the it's, fries. It's lacking though. the late night and the breakfast fries food. Are fries are not good. Fries are not good. In, In-N-Out, though... I want to hear it, from the chef's perspective, actually. In-N-Out, in it's just completely different. It's completely different. I yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get that. It's got. It's like I always. Also, like, I am annoyed by In and Out uh, in principle because they went to every Texas city before they came to Houston, and yeah. then when they did come to Houston years later, they ended up out in of the suburbs. Stafford. Too. Yeah, yeah. I just saw one. I just saw one in like the Woodlands or somewhere the other day too. I'm like, there's one in Katy, but the line always goes. Not like a lot of love for Houston, down. so that irks me a little bit. If you that, don't that, compare, that it works better if you don't compare the two. It, it's it's completely different to me. Uh, yeah, in and out though, I can be productive afterwards. Like yeah, I feel, yeah, I feel fine, even animal style, like fully <laughs> fully loaded. Well, they're just they're, no, no, they're, no. They're smaller burgers. Yeah. It's lighter. It's fresher. There's something about it like it. It's a snack. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Uh, Water burger is, is a little more. Yeah, it's, it's a, a commitment. More, it's a Texas burger. It's a it's, commitment. Yeah. like you're like yeah, I'm just staying here. Like I'm not. I can't like go to back to work after this. Like this is just, and I like I said I can't eat it during the day. Nah, no, it's unnatural to eat water burger during the day when the sun's well, up. Because we don't. probably we grew up going to drive through at, at two at, in the morning. At two in the morning, so it's just like there's that association, uh, and it and it tastes so good at two in the morning. But I'll tell you what, I know that we're talking with like you know an award winning chef or whatever. Or whatever. No, I didn't mean that in a negative way. Or, what, I, or whatever. Yeah. You, I apologize. You Why? cannot beat, to me, a McDouble. But McDonald's, to me, is still the undisputed legend. Disagree. Nope. No. <laughs> nope. There, and add Big Mac sauce to it. No. No? no. no? Okay. Not a thousand, a, thousand McDonald's island. breakfast is hard to beat. Burgers? Nope. Ooh. An egg McMuffin? There's a, there's, Sausage biscuit? There's a smell to McDonald's that if they bottled... I mean, I would, I would, I would buy it. There's, there's got to be something they pump through the AC. Yeah, like they do in Vegas. Like it's oxygen in McDonald's. Like to, yeah, well, it's it, French fries. It, man. It's it's the French fries. Oh. Probably it's uh, it, you know the, the the reason why their fries have historically been incredible is because they they fried it in tallow. They fried it, they fried their French fries in back in the in day. Beef, yeah, like beef it was fat. really. Mm. Well, they they it's not tallow today. But they were able to replicate oh. that that taste and aroma. They engineered through, through it. Science, yeah. And and what I what I respect the heck out of McDonald's is the um, amount of like food technology mm. that that goes goes into what what they produce to create consistency, you know, to billions, yeah, you know, a, around the world. I mean that that is a feat in itself. That you know you can you can hate them all you want. But just from like a hum- human accomplishment, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's 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 incredible. And know? right now it's Lent season, so you get a lot of I, I um, fish fillet time. Yeah, the fillet of fish. And my favorite thing is when I go fill up my truck at the Kroger off of um, Studemont. It's right next to the McDonald's, mm-hmm. and I get free smells. Well, I get yeah. it smells amazing, right? Yeah, yeah, there's something about, and it's yeah. probably it's probably because it smells like childhood. Yeah, like it's, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know about y'all, but it was kind of a deal for us. Like, oh, if you do this, we'll go to McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> with your parents, it was sort of bribery. And like they, they were like, and they were like, well, it's cheap, so it's like, it's like it wasn't really a bribe for them. Yeah. It was like we're saving some money on this. Yeah, we we win, like the kids yeah. win, but we win too because it's not expensive. Actually, when I was in the uh, 
sixth grade, we were getting ready to move from Hawaii to Mississippi and my, which was quite a move. And my mom left a few months before my dad for her job. And my dad trying to be a good dad. He would take my brother and I to McDonald's like every day after school because <laughs> he wasn't cooking. <laughs> and, uh, and yes. he was like, and we were like, dad, can you take us? And he took us, which I appreciated. I gained like, 15 pounds or something like that. <laughs> in the span of three months we got to mississippi and i was like fat your mom's mom. like who's this kid yeah like, my mom was pissed you leave nick at home super size she still gives my dad a hard time about that actually he hasn't lived that one down but thank you I, though, dad but yeah it's also i mean i can't i even bring up mcnuggets jeez like oh i got a 20 piece when i was home in mississippi the other day oh but they forgot the barbecue sauce which totally killed it for me totally killed it i nick, guess i just wasn't a mcdonald's kid i was a burger king kid Hmm. So, you know what? Yeah, I was. We just weren't that's at McDonald's. Its own smell. Yeah, yeah. Like we were, <laughs> that's its own. In Kingwood, smell. I don't remember there being a McDonald's growing up. But every Friday, when I was in preschool, my mom would pick me up, and when she picked me up, she would have a Sprite and chicken nuggets from Burger King. So and those I was just good. A Burger they King weren't kid. really nuggets you know what? either. Uh, they were like, like kind of like chicken strip but nuggets. They were, yeah. Things, yeah. But they were white meat. I remember that. Mm -hmm. if it were white something. They were good. And I, it, you know, I learned this in California too. People don't really like McDonald's. When I went to college out there, it was like. They're kind of, you know, elitist with their in and out and their fat burger and all yeah. sort of stuff. I like but, how he says they, like he didn't just say that in and outs better than Whataburger. <laughs> I mean, cognitive dissonance here is just off the charts. <laughs> so, I, well, but, but Whataburger, or sorry, Burger King, I was going to say, I used to like their, uh, the chicken sandwich. The chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. It was like that a was long too. Mm -hmm. bread, but anyway. I they also had their own fish burger. It was called the Whaler. That sounds and it creeped me out when I was a kid because is wait, this whale? Yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, I mean, at whaler, it's like you're like you work Maybe out it's on, real whale. Yeah, like ooh, this is a whale, great whale. Because there was a, there was a Burger King we went to next to the batting cages by Alameda Mall, and that was where my dad would always take us after the batting cages was that Burger King. That's what I remember there. Now for fish, I think, and and for us, Lent, I was always stoked for Fridays because it was Long John Silver's, which is uh oh, yeah. not does not get the, the respect and love that that it deserves we that. were a captain d's family okay yeah, yeah long john, long john silver's beer batter is in, in epic and I mean, the crispies yeah all the little mm. flex that you yeah. get with them Bur uh Are these like fish sticks we're talking or? no no it's like no. <laughs> you describe it better than i do i guess it's like oh uh, it's 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 a it's like fish and chips it's a hmm. it's more it's I don't know if it's cod or haddock or, or what they're using now, but the quality of their beer batter and the quality of the, just the fry. Uh, on, so at the, the bottom, fish. there was always these little like crunchy balls, like battered balls. And that was like one of the best things. When you were a kid, you called them crispies. And then one of my favorite things was to get the malt vinegar and like have them on like a little cup and just pour the hell of that malt vinegar in there. And just then the crispies would get a little moist and just. And the hush puppies. Too. Yeah. The hush puppies yeah. Too. There still is a Captain D's in Alvin, and every now and then I will go down there and just take a walk down memory lane. I'm starving. The older I get, though, it's harder to recover from. We're that. next. This next, David, we got to do another episode with you. There's got to be food involved. Let's talk about your restaurant. We don't, yeah. we don't necessarily have to. Have, fast, fast, you don't necessarily have to cook next time, but like we need to, we need to do another one of these down the road where we're all eating something, maybe fast food. Mm. Um, but I that would be. Let's just say somebody going to the Limbar for the first time mm. uh, is at the Ion, 4201 Main Street in Midtown, the old Sears building. Um, what would you recommend to someone uh, for their first experience? Uh, definitely the ceviche, uh, just because, like I said, it's it's really a, a unique uh, seafood ex experience overall with, you know, the Peruvian influence mixed with the, the Polynesian. Uh, the empanada trio is, is kind of a great way to sample uh, the flavors across the board uh truffle twinkies our lamb chops the smoked lamb chops we smoke them in, in corn husk so it's almost like you know smoky barbecue with a, with a guajillo glaze and then uh a mediterranean um, couscous tabbouleh underneath them um, but my favorite dish at the moment is uh a chicken ballotine mm. which is something that i uh i hadn't made since culinary school it was literally like one of my culinary school exams where we had to debone an entire chicken uh, make a stuffing out of the leg meat with shallot white wine uh, and then roll the chicken into a football 
and and roast it. And it's and it's so cool to be able to recreate uh, something like that with with our flavors. It's, it's served with a sherry cream sauce that's uh, really special to me because it's what my dad used to uh, serve to my sisters and I at the restaurant when, when we'd come home, when we'd come to the restaurant after school, it was a grilled chicken with a sherry cream sauce. So it kind of ties, ties a lot of really cool. This is back in like late eighties, early nineties, probably. Yeah. 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 So there's a lot of, a lot of food nostalgia packed into, to one dish there. And it's, it's fun. And it kind of has kind of like Thanksgiving vibes and and it's, it's, it's a good one to share. Um, And then you, you know, you mentioned the sweet corn flan, um, the, the tres leches. Uh, my favorite one uh, is uh, the foie, foie donut holes. I was about to bring those up, so, yeah. So we do a, uh, a, a foie gras mousse uh, and, and do a brulee uh, on, on the bottom of the dish and then top it off with, with four uh, sour, sourdough uh, donut holes. So they're, they're, they're kind of savory. Uh, with some fig fig preserves and uh, and fresh thyme, uh, a lot of, a lot of the food um, at the Limbar, you know, speaking of dispensaries, <laughs> I, I I wanted I wanted to play on on sweet and and savory. Uh, there's something about when you're in the in the zone, like really grubbing, really getting down, like going back between salty and sweet, and then salty and sweet. Uh, I mean, if you know, you know. <laughs> so if the Limbar was a weed strain, it'd be a hybrid. Right. Hmm. There we go. <laughs> if, you know, if you know, you know. Hmm. That's, a That's an idea. Segue. Yeah. We're smoking some Limbar. Yeah. All right. There right. we go. Maybe All we right. need to come up with a new strand there. Yeah. <laughs> the Limbar. Oh. Yeah. Let's open up a weed bar inside <laughs> the Limbar. Yeah. Hey, man, that's uh, not, not, not far off. There's the, have y'all heard of Wild? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I have not been yet. I've been. There's a couple couple locations. Right? Yes, mm-hmm. I've heard great things. Lots of THC going on there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a cool. Urban spot. Flower is our spot down it's south. A dispensary, yeah. yeah. Okay, dispensary so, that we work with uh, right cool. by Hobby. Yeah, down south by Hobby Airport. I always, uh, whenever I go visit, I always get um, research materials. Nice. Yeah. So for research, that also would be good to have for another podcast. Oh yeah. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're Maybe we're April, still in our infancy here. Maybe you know, late April. Yeah. Like maybe like after April nineteenth, but before the twenty first, yeah. yeah, somewhere in that window. Yeah, we're, we're figuring things out as we go with this podcast. We're gonna <laughs> start uh, adding some things to the mix. I think. I think you're gonna be the first return guest. That'd be rad. I think so. S- super fun. I'm calling it now. I'm calling my <laughs> shot. All right, folks. Now I'm gonna do it right this time. Now, you know. Nailed it. Did I get it right? One take right. wonder. One take one take Craig. <laughs> if you know, know, you know. Now if you if know. If you know, you know. Uh. If, you, if you know, <laughs> you know. I'm still if sweaty you know. over that here talking be, about Whataburger. Yeah, if new closing line. Whew. If you know, you know. <laughs> you know. Sign this guy up. Now you know. There we go.